Good afternoon po. Uh, the title is Cultivating a Learning Culture, but don't be scared by it. Okay. That's just the title. Uh, what I'll do today actually is tell you the story of my first year of teaching introductory psychology here at De La Salle University. Okay. So first, let me introduce to you my students. Meet Nico and Cess. You look strange. <laughs> yes, one is 18, the other is 50. Mother and son. Yeah, I'm too old that it's so common that, Sir, pinapakumusta kayo ng nanay ko. Okay, but, they were both my students at different stages. Cess was my student way back in 1985. Don't compute for the age. <laughs> and Nico was my student okay, last term or two terms ago here at Telasa. Okay. During the time of Cess, okay, the way we teach or the way I taught was syllabus, textbook, and mimeograph handouts. Anybody still knows the word mimeograph here? Wala, si Rox na alam nyo. Okay? And then, we had, well, it was typical talk and chalk. And then, after that, the only thing we did was give quizzes, exams. Okay? So I was the classic talk and test teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, question. How many still teach the same way today? Well, reality? A lot. Okay. A lot of teachers still teach to test. Okay. So, I ask myself, you know, I'm teaching the son... Uh, Okay, of a former student 30 years ago. Should I teach them the same way? And should I teach him the same thing? It is still intro to psychology. Answer is no. Okay. Because Nico, okay, just like most of perhaps your generation, okay, if you ask them questions like, where did you learn that? They will tell you, hey, I googled it. Okay? I saw it on YouTube. Okay? I saw it on television. Okay? I got it from Wikipedia. Or I learned it from friends. That is the mode students learn. Okay? Moreover, okay, they are always connected. Okay? They multitask. Okay? They use multi-tools and they love multimedia. Okay? They bring their own devices in school, right? Okay. They can, they bring them to school, they sleep with them practically. Okay. And this is how they take down notes today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? okay. I was surprised, you know, that I have one side story. Okay, one time I was going down the elevator and then one of the older Education teachers was complaining. Hindi na marunong magkumo ng notes sa mga sudyante ngayon. Pinipicturan yung blackboard ko. Hello! <laughs> Di ba? Okay. And okay, if teachers give them homework, nobody works alone. They actually collaborate online. Okay. That's, you, you could see that on Facebook. So there's no point giving individual assignments today, isn't it? Okay. So, I call them the TM. They're, they are techno savvy, multi tool, multimedia, okay, and multitask. So now the dilemma is you have a lot of talk and text, talk and test teachers teaching TM. That's riot. Okay? So I will not want or did not want to be like that. Okay? So, how did I prepare for Nico's class? Okay. 
Well, just like what you do, I googled it. <laughs> okay. So found several crash course video, and to my surprise, this psychology, I found an entire set, you know. Uh, the crash course video are the talking head, but okay, they have the whole set. Okay, perfect. Okay. My work is done. I'm that lazy teacher, because my work is done. Okay. I searched further and found better videos, you know, like from Nova Science Today. Okay. Now, I want you to take a... Okay. Are we on? Okay. Just watch this. Imagine a magnetic wand that could control your brain. Oh, that was nice. Using a map of the brain, he can zap the area that controls a specific body part, like my toe. Oh, wow. Was that my stroke a little too much? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, it was a little much. One, two, three, four. The wand can even affect someone's speech. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. And once the pulse is removed, 26. Everything goes back to normal. It's sort of a remarkable thing that one can put something over somebody's head and modify the way they behave. Wow. The wand works by producing a powerful magnetic pulse. So it doesn't look like a lot, but the magnetic field that it generates is about the strength of an MRI machine, of a very strong MRI machine. Since electricity and magnetism are really just two forms of the same thing, a magnet can affect the electrical signals in your brain. Now this is your brain. It's basically an electric web of billions of neurons wired together. When a strong magnetic pulse hits these neurons, it alters their electric current. The process is called transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. Electricity is the currency of the brain. All thoughts, all beliefs, all actions are just electrical impulses. And so TMS, we're actually able to get in there and influence the currency of the brain focally and non-invasively. The stronger the magnetic pulse, the deeper into the brain it goes. And by adjusting the pattern of the pulse, you can change the way that part of the brain functions. We can turn a part of the brain up or down or temporarily turn it off. It doesn't take a genius to see that it should be a pretty fertile way to begin to understand how the brain works. One mystery George wanted to decipher was how the brain processes pain. For example, when marathon runners are injured during a race, they might not even feel it. What's happening in the brain to mask that pain? You know, it's very common if you're in the middle of a great sports event and you twist your ankle, you will not feel that pain until after the event. When you injure your ankle, pain signals are sent through the nervous system to the sensory cortex. But researchers suspected that an area called the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of your brain, also plays a key role in your perception of pain. What I did next was to set up an Edmodo site. Okay. And then everything that I found, put them together neatly. So videos, links, ex tests, whatever. Okay. And then put them all up as my library in Edmodo. Okay. And, well, I've been teaching for 35 years. Yes, I'm that old. Okay. Uh, and for the last 20 years, I said I never gave an exam nor, nor check attendance. Marilyn can attest to that. Okay. Uh, this year, I added something else. No more textbook. No prescribed textbook. What my students had instead was a curated okay, textbook okay, of all the things I found. It's free of charge. 
And what it contains is not a textbook. They have an entire digital library. Okay? It's a new term we call digital curation. Okay? So they have the richest possible source that they can have okay, for their textbook. Okay? So how did I run my class? Well, first two weeks, all they had to do was go online, go to Psychology Today, take five different types of personality or tests, and then okay, they look like this. And then their assignment was to go through the test and then submit to me online okay, their findings. And then afterwards, they are made to introduce themselves in a meet me type of presentation. Now I get to meet, get, uh, got to meet my students psychologically. These are the exams they took and these are the results they got. Okay. So this girl scored 62 on stress but 28 on relationships. Now we have some idea of what kind of students we actually had. Right? Okay. So I don't give grades but I gamify the class by giving awards and badges online. And that's the new currency for students today. Okay, they don't care about grades, they want the bragging rights. And that's what pushes people. Okay. The next 10 weeks, okay, serious stuff come in. I divided the entire course into just 10 topics. How many topics did you have in your intro psych class? I only have 10. Okay. The way to do it is, okay, each group okay, was made to understand, apply, explain, and everybody must have to experience each of those 10 topics. So what I did was, I asked each group in the class to prepare a game plan of activities, experiments, and games. Okay. And in the process, okay, the only target is they have to experience the topic. So that if the topic is motivation, experience it. The topic is personality, experience it. Okay. And I made myself available online so that they can consult, show me their game plan before they come to class. It was not about the grade. Okay, I wanted them to look good every time they come out. Okay, they look as if they know something, so they impress the class, and okay, that triggered the entire thing. Okay, so we had online consultations and feedback, and then no reporting. I call them teach back sessions. Our teach back sessions look like this. They were presentations class experiments, class activities, and games. Okay? Now, since there were a lot of activity, uh, sources we have, I allowed them to use interactive websites. Okay? So they were using materials such as this. Okay? Which direction is the girl spinning? Okay? Close your eyes for five seconds, open it them, them again, look at the leg. Did it change direction? Close your eyes again, open it again. Did it change direction? Okay, so this is how I make them experience the concept of attention and perception. Okay, we also had activities side like this. So which is darker, lighter gray? Sure? 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 No, they're the same. So, we use them as pegs for starting off with what the activities are. Okay? And for other activities such as showing learning, okay, can everybody read this aloud?
So you just experience the closure principle. So what happened during the rest of the term? Every group who made their presentations uploaded their slides, their links, whatever they had on Edmodo. Okay? So it's available for everybody even after my course. So now the question, what happened? These are freshman students taking this approach under me. Well, one section, everybody got 4.0. Another section, only 36. Okay, another section, only 10. Now first, let me explain my grading system. Huh? Okay, I only give three grades. A zero, if you didn't learn anything. A one, if you learn something. And a four, if you can apply what you have learned. So if they run their game plan and activities well and people are able to explain the concept and learn the concept, okay, then they get a four. So one section practically got all fours. Okay. Um, analyzing them, okay, what happened with section C? Okay. Section C were the typical students who stayed with the material and parroted everything that they saw in the video. Okay. The other two sections self-studied the material, searched for new things, and then started relating okay, what they learned during the feedback session. Okay. And this is the emerging new construct called connectivism. Okay. It is really about searching, making sense, Okay, selecting the relevant and then interconnecting. Okay, let me give you a one minute okay, lecture on what connectivism is. Okay, it's simply learning is a creation process, not knowledge consumption. Okay, everybody thinks as you get them in, that's it, you learn that no. Okay. It begins with finding, connecting nodes of information, whether they're fields, ideas, concepts. They can come from a person, a book, a video, whatever. It's mash up of the entire thing. Okay? Uh, it requires making meaning by integrating what you have learned with your emotion. Okay. Learning that goes into the heart that you can feel is something that will stay with you. Pag hindi mo siya feel, you will forget it right after class or right after your exams. Okay. And lastly, connectivism is about currency. It has to be new, recent. Okay. Something that we know now may be obsolete. Okay. Like, the, uh, like the problem with the, uh, Pluto, for instance. Okay. After all, okay, half of what you know will be obsolete in 10 years. Moreover, the amount of world knowledge doubles every 18 months. Okay? So, question, why am I here today? Well, here's the, here's the last title, Integrating. For the past 20 years, okay, I've been focused on IT in education. Okay, early on, the idea was everybody must be computer literate. Problem is only students wear. So my advocacy then was make sure the teacher, the administrator also learns the technology because it, it's needed. Ten years later, okay, I was advocating ICT integration. Use and make it a part of the school set. So let the English teachers teach word processing, not the computer teacher. Okay? Let the math teacher teach spreadsheets, not the computer teacher. Today, my advocacy is about changing the entire culture. The entire society must realize that informal, lifelong, technology-supported, connectivist learning is here to stay. Okay? 
So that will happen only if the schools, the teachers, employers, and government okay, all go hand in hand. And my recommendations are, one, okay, schools should focus, or curriculum must be focused less on content but more on the learning skills. Okay? Knowing know how and where is more important than the what. Okay? Teacher education should apply newer, newer learning approaches, including technology. So behavioral, connect, connectivist, and cognitive should be supplemented by connectivist learning. Okay? Schools might provide access to digital educational materials and then revisit non-rigid, okay, promote non-rigid teaching practices. Uh, government, well, DepEd and CHED will definitely have to uh, you know, shape up. And perhaps an ICT department must be established. And then the private sector also will have to rethink about their selection and hiring criteria. Okay, go beyond diplomas. Ability to learn, ability to lead are more important. Okay. Um, the recent flavor of the month called student-centered learning is really about breeding a new set of self-directed learners. So we are in a learning shift. And I don't see any better way to show it. Okay, with a lifted clip I saw in the last okay, CNN movie last December. And this is how our students are learning today. Batch 2013, thank you, Wikipedia. Good evening, thank you very much.